All right. Last question here on the practice exam. Um, and this last question relates to um, periodic properties. Right? So things we should be able to figure out from our kind of analysis of the properties of electron configurations and nuclear charge and shielding of the atoms involved. So the first one, um, we want to rank the following in order of increasing atomic radius. So increasing, so we want to start with the smallest and go to the largest, and the atoms we're looking at are oxygen, sulfur, and fluorine. Right now, we should keep in mind, right, there's kind of, that's if that's if that's the periodic table, right, radius increases as you go down, decreases as you go across. Now it increases as you go down because you're adding extra layers um, as you fill more sublevels. Um, it's decreasing as you go across because within an energy level, the nuclear charge is going up. So even though electrons are going into the same layer, the charge that pulls those electrons closer together is going up. So if we look on the periodic table and we find these atoms, right, it's sulfur, oxygen, and fluorine. They're all kind of in this corner up here. Um, and we can compare the relationships between some of them. So sulfur is lower down in the periodic table. That is going to be the largest um, of the atoms for sure. And right? it's um, the other relationship we can think about is oxygen to fluorine. So as we go across, remember the nuclear charge is kind of shrinking, pulling in the size of the electron cloud. So fluorine should be smaller than oxygen, and oxygen should be smaller than sulfur. So increasing um, atomic radius, fluorine would be the smallest, it would be smaller than oxygen, and oxygen would be smaller than sulfur. Okay. Second question, um, which has the largest ionization energy, phosphorus, silicon, sulfur, or selenium? So similar idea here, right? So the, this, this one was for size, right? For ionization energy, that is how much energy does it take to remove an electron from a particular atom? Um, as we go down, ionization energy is gonna increase, or no, sorry, it's gonna decrease because it's easier to take the electron because the outermost electron is going to be more shielded from the nuclear charge. Even as the nuclei get larger and larger, atomic numbers go up, that last electron is going to be really far out. There's going to be a lot of electron-electron repulsion. It's going to be easy to take it. Ionization energy is going to increase as we go across, and that's because of the increasing nuclear charge. The nuclear charge goes up. It's going to hold those electrons more tightly. So if we kind of keep those trends in mind and we look at the atoms involved here, so here's silicon, phosphorus, um, sulfur, and then selenium is down below. So we're looking for the one that has the largest ionization energy. So we can eliminate selenium right away because selenium would have a lower ionization energy than sulfur. Because remember, as we go down, it's decreasing. So we'll cross out selenium. And then it's going to be one of these three, silicon, phosphorus, or sulfur. And remember, as we go across, they're getting uh, larger because it's harder to take the electron from that particular atom. So it'll be a little harder to take an electron from phosphorus and even harder to take an electron from the sulfur. So sulfur would be the one that has the largest ionization energy here in this group. Now, it might be hard to decide which has the lowest um, because right, silicon is two steps back from sulfur, but selenium is lower than sulfur. Right, So it's kind of hard to make a comparison when the column and the row is changing because how big those differences are is gonna be hard to factor in. So if we were asked which one is the lowest, it might be a harder question to answer, right? We need a different set of pieces in the question for that to be a fair question. Okay, C, place the following in order of increasing radius. And in this case, we're looking at ions. So the important thing with ions, the first thing you might want to rec uh, try to look for is do they have the same electron configuration? Because it's going to be tricky to compare if they don't have the same electron configuration. So oxygen with a minus 2 charge would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Right? That will be the same for nitrogen with a minus 3. 
and fluorine with a minus one. So those would they would all have the same electron configuration. That would, the term we use for that is isoelectronic, the same electron configuration. Um, and if that's the case, right, the size is going to be dependent on the nucleus. Right? If we have the same cloud of electrons, a nucleus with more positive charges will contract that cloud more and make a smaller ion. So if we're ordering these is in increasing, we want the smallest one first. The smallest one will be the one with the largest nuclear charge. That'll be the fluoride ion. It's got nine for atomic number. Um, the intermediate will be the oxygen. So fluorine will be smaller than the oxygen ion, and that will be smaller than the nitride ion. Right? And again, the, the difference there is the charge of the nucleus. Okay, and the last section here um, of the last question on the practice test, place the following in order of increasing ionization energy. So we talked about ionization energy up here, and right? it's going to increase as we go across. It's going to decrease as we go down the periodic table. So let's see. We're over on this side. Um, we've got cesium, strontium, and barium. So maybe we can look at... Um, Two comparisons here within the column and within the row um, to figure this out. And increasing, so we want the least and we want to go to the highest. So um, since it decreases as we go down, we know barium will be less than strontium since they are in the same column. So strontium's above barium. So barium's going to be less than strontium. Um, and since it increases as we go to the right of the periodic table, cesium will be less than barium. So cesium would be the lowest here. Um, it would be a little bit less than barium, and barium would be less than strontium since strontium is above barium. Okay. All right, that's uh, the end of the practice test. Um, so generally this test is chapter seven and eight. Right, so that gives you uh, still a pretty good list of things you need to know, even though it's only two chapters. Right, from chapter seven, we've got light and the calculations that go along with light. We've got atomic structure as it relates to things like quantum numbers and electron configurations. Um, you can kind of uh, compare all those and mix and match, uh, take electrons out to make cations, add more electrons in to make anions. How does that relate to the electron configuration? All those rules um, for quantum numbers, predicting um, this, the electron configuration of atoms past the periodic table, right? And your periodic properties, like in this last question, we get into chapter eight. And that was basically about drawing Lewis structures. So you could expect a fair sized helping of Lewis structures on your test. You should know how to apply the octet rule, how to figure out formal charge, right? So you should be very uh, practiced and adept at identifying the formal charge um, of atoms. Um, but some of the stuff in chapter nine, um, we may have talked about it already. Sometimes we start talking about it, even though it's not going to be on this test. Um, the molecular shape, the bond angles, polarity, that sort of thing will not be part of this test, but that will be something that we'll need to know for the final. Okay.